When is Independence Day? Easy, July 4th. Everyone knows that, even non-Americans know that. Yeah, but why? You may be thinking that the answer is simple, because that's the day the Declaration of Independence was signed. I feel like I'm about to tell someone that the Tooth Fairy isn't real. Many people already know this, and if you don't, you will now. The Declaration of Independence was not signed on July 4th. It was actually signed on August 2nd. Okay, fine then, when the Continental Congress voted to declare independence. That actually happened on July 2nd. In fact, John Adams thought that this should be Independence Day, saying, The second day of July 1776 will be the most memorable ep... ep... epoca? That... that's not a word! in the history of America. He also said that about May 15th when he wrote a preamble that he regarded as the Declaration of Independence, but nobody else did. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Okay, well then what happened on July 4th? Congress ordered some final official copies of the Declaration of Independence to be printed. This is the day that those famous immortal words were printed and spread to the masses. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that we will not go quietly into the night we will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're, We're going, going to, to survive. survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Really though, aside from those first few sentences, the rest of the Declaration of Independence reads like a whiny list of complaints aimed at the king, ranging from the fairly legitimate, he has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us, in many cases, of the benefit of trial by jury to the fairly ridiculous. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records, for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. Really? You're complaining about the location of your meeting places? Anyway, since we're already splitting hairs, which Declaration of Independence is THE Declaration of Independence? Well, you should know by now that I wouldn't rhetorically ask myself a question if it had an easy answer. As I said, on July 4th, 1776, the Continental Congress ordered around 200 copies of the Declaration of Independence to be printed and distributed to various state assemblies, military units, and institutions. These are known as the Dunlap Broadsides, after the printer who printed them. They're all a little different, actually, since the typeset would shift between printings, or he would stack them on top of each other or fold them in half before the ink was dry. So they all have their own little quirks, and there are 26 known copies in existence today. And there may be more! The most recent copy was discovered in 2008. In 1989, one was discovered behind a framed picture that was bought at a flea market for only $4. $4! That actually happened! Seriously! Fun fact, none of them were actually officially sent to England, or, you know, the people who probably most needed to see it. If you're going to declare a war, the war doesn't actually start until the declaration of war is received. Not written, not announced, but received. At least, back in the days of gentlemanly war, which 1776 was definitely back in those days. Granted, the fighting started long before the Declaration of Independence was even a glimmer in Thomas Jefferson's eye. Just for the sake of being thorough, the date that most historians view as the beginning of the American Revolution is April 15th, 1775, with the shot heard round the world at Lexington and Concord. Well over a year before the Declaration, which, again, was never sent with an ambassador to the king or anything. It just kind of made its way back to England through various British officials who were still living in the US. Two months ago, another copy of the Declaration of Independence was found in Sussex, England, likely written between 1783 and 1790. And it's a copy of a copy of something someone said to someone in a noisy bar, so it's a little different. It's close enough, but it obviously played a few rounds of telephone. Anyway, I'm wildly off track here. There are 26 Dunlap broadsides, two of which are in the Library of Congress and one in the National Archives. So on July 19th, the Congress commissioned an engrossed parchment copy to be handwritten by Thomas Matlack. This is known as the Matlack Declaration, and it's the one that was signed on August 2nd. This is the one John Hancock signed with his huge fancy signature, because he was the President of the Congress, not the President of the United States. There's a difference, but I made a video on that already. But this is the one that's on primary display in the National Archives. 
and the one that Nicolas Cage stole in National Treasure. This is the one that many people refer to as the Declaration of Independence. Just for completionist's sake, in January 1777, the Congress commissioned another set of official broadsides to be printed, this time with the names of everyone who signed it, known as the Goddard Broadside. This is the first time that the public actually found out who signed the Declaration of Independence, and there are only nine of these left in existence. So if Congress declared independence on July 2nd, some copies were distributed on July 4th, but the Declaration of Independence was written on July 19th and signed on August 2nd, why is Independence Day on July 4th? For the same reason that Christmas is on December 25th. They just decided. Oh yeah, I'm about to ruin Christmas for you, but only a little bit. If you don't know already, most historians agree that Jesus was probably born in the year 4 BC, which doesn't, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that nobody knows the exact day. Back in the year 200, when they were trying to figure all of this out, the main guesses were April 20th or 21st or May 20th. There were other guesses all over the place, but weirdly, none of them were in December. So why December 25th? Because that was the winter solstice under the Julian calendar. It's December 21st now. And it was during other existing holidays and festivals like Saturnalia and Sol Invictus. So again, why December 25th? Because they just decided to put it there. Why July 4th? because they just decided to put it there. But should they have? Let's look at it another way. What makes a country a country? I mean, besides the whole having land, government, and people and stuff. It's when you're a recognized member of the UN, right? Well, let's take a look at an example. Kosovo. If the majority of you were to look at a map, you would see this. Kosovo, because according to my demographics, most of you live in countries that recognize Kosovo. But it can't get into the UN because two members of the Security Council, China and Russia, say it's not a country. So when they look at a map, they see this. So is it a country? Since there was no UN in 1776, this example doesn't really apply, but we can use the same vein of thought. It's when other countries agree that you're a country. As you can imagine, since there was no single body to declare your status as a country, this could get a little messy. So who who is the first country, aside from the United States, to recognize the United States as a country? Morocco. What? No, let's talk about countries that actually matter, please. Okay then. France. Without a doubt, that French recognition and military aid is what helped America win the Revolutionary War. But the French waited until after the American victory at Saratoga because, well, think about it, nobody wants to support a loser. And predictably, just over a month later, Britain declared war on France, so they were taking a huge risk by recognizing the United States. This is the same problem as during the Civil War, by the way. I know, another tangent, sorry. But had anyone recognized the independence of the Confederacy, things might have turned out differently. But since they kept losing, nobody did. So okay, France, Morocco, and a few others, whatever. The one that matters is Britain, right? Yeah, well, that's where things get a little fuzzy. Because while Britain did formally recognize the independence of the US with the Treaty of Paris, which ended the revolution, they didn't really act like it. They kept capturing American ships and impressing the sailors into the Royal Navy, and doing other things that are generally regarded as not cool things to do to an independent country, which started the War of 1812. An often forgotten war, which is sometimes referred to to as the second war for independence, because like I said, the UK, yes, it was the UK at this point, didn't really respect American sovereignty. After this war ended on December 24th, 1814, there's been over 200 years of continuous peace between the US and the UK. But there's yet another way to look at it. When did the United States become the United States? I mean, sure, the original 13 colonies declared independence on July to August 1776, but we didn't have a real federal government yet. And then we had those dumb articles of confederation. But when was the constitution handed down by Jesus? Again, that's a messy question. It was written in 1787, ratified in 1788, and went into effect on March 4th, 1789. That's when the United States became the United States that we all know and love today. So when is Independence Day? July 4th. Look at a calendar. Okay, but like, should it be though? The revolution had been going on for quite a while, but independence was declared on July 2nd, printed on July 4th, and signed on August 2nd. The war didn't end until 1783, or 1814 depending on how you look at it, and the constitution didn't happen until 1789, so... Should it be? Yes, you have to pick somewhere, okay? Okay, well the next time someone asks you what actually happened on July 4th, at least now, you'll know better. So when do you think Independence Day should be? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to declare that subscribe button's independence by clicking it. In the meantime, follow me on Facebook and Twitter and join the conversation on the subreddit.